we're going to do things a little differently since we have three candidates uh, tonight. We're going to do everything strictly in alphabetical order. So that means uh, we're going to start the opening statements with that in alphabetical order. The closing statements are also going to be in alphabetical order. When we get to the portion of the program where the candidates ask each other a question, not everyone is going to get to ask everyone else a question. What's going to happen is Mr. Keene is going to ask Mr. Principe a question. Mr. Principe is going to ask Mr. Royce a question. Mr. Royce is going to ask Mr. Keene. Okay, so we're going to start with our opening statements, and the first opening statement, uh, three minutes, is Mr. Keene. Good evening. I want to thank the Committee of 100 for this opportunity to provide the public with a fair and informative look at the candidates for office this election year. I'm Steve Keene, and I've lived in Woodbridge for 21 years. When I first moved here, my oldest child was just starting second grade. Now I have six grandchildren, four of whom live in this county. Um, during those years, I've watched Whitbridge grow from a medium-sized residential community to what would pass in most of the country for a small city. I've watched our neighborhoods morph from single-family homes on generally quiet streets into a nightmare of zoning violations that have allowed, through the lax enforcement of our laws, a steady improvement of non-residential uses and illegal gangs into our communities. I've watched as public officials ignore clear violations of our zoning and occupancy laws, even so far as allowing large groups of men to loiter around all day drinking alcohol and, and using private property as an open sewer directly adjacent to a public school. When my children were young, I watched as the schools deteriorated and instruction foundered. Back then, my solution was to get involved and run for the school board. I promised to fix the broken school infrastructure, live within the structure of the existing tax base, and end the squabbling with the Board of County Supervisors. When you elected me, I kept all those promises. Last year, my wife and I looked around and after four months of soul searching, decided that we'd had enough of just watching our community fall apart, decided to undertake this campaign to take back our homes, our streets, and our neighborhoods. So here's my pledge to the residents of Woodbridge. As your supervisor, I'll hold the county government accountable for enforcing our laws. I'll hold those property owners who allow the congregation of loiterers on their property accountable for the actions of those people where it can be shown that they were aware of the code violations. I'll keep businesses out of residential communities as defined by the code. I'll protect the real estate tax rate break for low-income seniors, and I'll give public schools, public safety, parks, and libraries the resources necessary to meet their obligations to the community. I'm Steve Keene, and you have my word on it. <laughs> I want to make sure that the candidates know that they can use this microphone if they would like. Uh, Mr. Principe. Thank you, Ernie, and uh, many thanks to the uh, Committee of 100 for a fantastic uh, series of candidate forums. I truly believe that it's uh, great public service uh, here to our community, uh, the effort that you've all uh, put into this. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Frank Principe, and I'm the Democratic nominee for the Woodbridge seat on the Prince William County Board of Supervisors. Uh, you all know what a nominee is, but I want to remind you. Back in June, I was selected with 68% of the vote to be the Democratic Party holder going into the general election. With that, I won all eight precincts, one of them by 95%, and we were able to mobilize more voters back in June than the last two Democratic primaries combined. I feel very strongly that we have an organization uh, that I like to call Team Principe that hit the ground running and is running on all gears right now. We have a clear vision of a new Woodbridge that people have bought into and that people will support going forward. And most importantly, I like to say that we're running on the legacy of Hilda Barg. Supervisor Barg has provided a 20-year commitment and dedication to this community that is second to none and I'm proud to be associated with. Now, about the vision of Woodbridge. I want to say that <clears throat> voters at the doors, and I've knocked on some 5,000 doors, voters at the doors have told me, quite frankly, that they feel trapped in their homes. They can't go anywhere on the roads. They can't get to work during the week. They can't shop on the weekends. We need a new transportation system. A transportation system that includes mass transit, bus rapid transit, a commuter ferry service, and an extension of the metro rail system to Springfield, from Springfield down to Potomac Mills Mall. We also need to manage better our development. The development is out of whack. 
but I don't believe that a moratorium on development is the answer. That is a very simple soundbite solution. It's temporary. And oh, by the way, the current Board of Supervisors, the Republican-controlled Board of Supervisors, has failed to enact anything uh, short of that, short of perhaps raising proffers. Ensuring a world-class education. We have a great education system today, but I know we can make it a lot better. We need to maintain our revenue sharing agreement. We need to make sure that the facilities, the curriculum, and the teachers are adequately paid and resourced to ensure that our kids truly get the best education uh, possible. And we need to protect our citizens from crime. When we have 18,000 new citizens moving in, or residents moving into the county last year, yes, we get the riffraff as well. And we need to protect our citizens from crime. And finally, I think we need to maintain our social services. That is to say, we know there's something out of whack when we have 18,000 new citizens moving into the community and the current Board of Supervisors is cutting the budget on social services. There's something out wrong with that picture, and I'm the candidate to change that. cell phone goes off, you got to get down and give me 20. I can say that because I wore stripes. Good evening, I'm Chris Royce, and uh, I'm 39 years old. I am the youngest person running for the Woodbridge County Supervisor seat this year. Uh, I'm married. I've been married to Kathy Royce for almost 17 years now. We've got three wonderful children, Connor, Cameron, and Caroline. Connor and Cameron both attend uh, uh, public school here in Prince William County. Now, I'm a former paratrooper with the 82nd Airborne Division, a former Green Beret with the 3rd and 19th Special Forces Groups, a former FBI employee who did federal law enforcement budgeting for the FBI Laboratory Division for a presentation to the Department of Justice, OMB, and Congress. I've also spent a number of time, a lot of the time I've lived in Woodbridge, working exclusively in the former Soviet Union with former Soviet security services to secure their former biological warfare facilities. And I currently serve as the Director of International Security Operations for a small consulting firm that supports the Department of Defense the Department of Homeland Security in Alexandria. Now, I'm running because I believe in service to my community. I've been serving my community, my, my state, and my country since I was 17 years, years old, over 20 years now. I believe that now is a time for new leadership on Woodbridge. We have an opportunity now to, to have a, a fresh breath of air, a change in Woodbridge, a change from the old guard. And I tell you, I've led uh, on, the, on the issues in this race. I was the first one to announce racing and uh, or announce my, my candidacy. And I want to thank my opponents for stepping up and coming out to race against me. I appreciate that. Sorry Luis couldn't be here. I know you guys are too because we'd like to hear what he has to say. But um, I've led on the issues, getting the Route 1 corridor revitalization plan back on track, getting all this out of control growth under control, reducing our traffic congestion. But the main thing I've led on is the number one issue in Woodbridge. And that's continuing the crackdown on illegal immigration. <coughs> Now, I wanted to point out that none of us up here are an incumbent for a supervisor position. None of us have ever been a supervisor. So what you're going to be hearing about tonight is uh, how people are selected to be executive leaders. You're looking for someone that can create vision, that can make a plan to make that vision come true, budget to that plan, and execute that plan. And I think after tonight's over, after I've answered all the questions, I think it my turn to do that. I think this choice will be obvious that Chris Royce is the most qualified to be the next supervisor from Woodbridge on the Board of County Supervisors. Thank you. We're going to start with our questions, and again, the way we're going to work this is we're going to go alphabetically uh, for each question, and we're going to go through each of the candidates. We'll get their two-minute response to the question, and then each candidate, again, alphabetically, will get one minute to speak uh, on the, uh, and frankly to say whatever they want for an additional minute. <laughs> so the first, uh, the first question is, what do you intend to do different than Mrs. Barr and why, or what do you intend to continue that Mrs. Barr has done and why? Mr. Keene, you first. Uh, well, let me start by saying what I would do the same as Mrs. Barr is support social services. This is a, not a friendly thing you hear from people. They say, well, what are my taxes? What about my taxes? The fact of the matter is our safety, our, our social service safety net is critical in Woodbridge, and it's a small part of the budget. I intend to defend that. 
what I would do differently, and I say, ah, uh, I'm gonna be careful. Um, I am running and I am on a, on a very tight budget. I am paying for my own campaign. I have not taken, nor will I ever take, a nickel of campaign money from anybody, any developer who comes before us and asks us to approve or disapprove anything. You cannot take their money and then come along later and say, well, I'm gonna vote independently. I will not do that. The Potomac Community's Revitalization Plan has been practically a death knell for our community. We took, off, we took areas that were zoned for, for office, business space, that would have brought prime, good jobs here and turned it over to mixed residential and retail. That creates nothing but traffic and jams our roads more and more. We need to have, a, we need to amend or at least stop any, any more bleeding through the Potomac Community Revitalization Plan. It was an overlay district that was passed four years ago, after the last election, before the new board took place. And it has, it has caused a lot of pretty houses to go up and has brought a lot of low-end workers to our area to build those houses, resulting in high profits for the developers and more traffic for us and more congestion in our community with people who came here simply for construction jobs, is all I'll say. And that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Pritzke, in the interest of time, I will not repeat the question unless the candidates would like me to do so. So I'll take the uh, question in reverse order. What would I do the same as uh, Supervisor Hildebarg? Um, well, you know, she has such a stellar record uh, and one that I'm so proud of. Uh, I think I would uh, continue in, in her record vis-a-vis -vis, uh, world class, funding world-class education, ensuring social services for those families that need it, uh, and uh, managing growth. Uh, if there is anything I would do differently, um, I think uh, in this day and age, given the reality of politics that we have and witnessing the last debate, I think what we need to do differently going forward is to park politics at the door, to replace govern and government, uh, and to be able to work and manage from the middle. Uh, and I feel very strongly that if we can do that, the challenges that face Woodbridge and Prince William County in general will be problems that are behind us rather than currently in front of us. Uh, and that's uh, about all I have to say. Thank you. Mr. Royce, two minutes. Well, like I said, I think now's the time for a change, a real breath of fresh air and leadership in Woodbridge. So I'm going to do a lot of things different. I'm going to get the Rattle and Corridor Revitalization Plan back on track. I'm going to bring in work hard to bring in and improve our economic development, especially on the east end. And one of the reasons I want to do that is to try and decrease this county's dependency on property tax revenue. We're completely dependent on that in this county, and we need to transfer uh, that some of that revenue burden to commercial and retail development. I'm going to work hard to get out of control growth under control, have smart growth on the east end. The kind of growth that where we integrate the water into our community. You know, my, my travels around the world, every community I've been to that's on the water, uh, that what the water is integrated into the community, except Woodbridge. And by doing that, we're going to be able to attract uh, more more economic development, more high tech jobs. Integrating the water in uh, will also help with release relieving a, a transportation congestion. And of course. Uh, my flyer tonight, I've been talking about, I support uh, the testing of a high-speed water ferry. VDOT said that might be feasible uh, two years ago. Uh, I also want to improve foot traffic on Route 1, and by having high-tech jobs down here, we can't build it. There's no way we can build enough roads as long as we continue to live down here and work up north. And having high-tech jobs here hopefully would change some of our community patterns from north-south to east-west. But none of this is going to happen unless we continue the crackdown on illegal immigration in Prince William County. If we don't do that, one of the main things we're going to need to get Woodbridge back to the destination that it deserves to be is it's going to put our it's going to put our AAA bond rating in uh, tremendous jeopardy. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes, if everyone could hold their applause. Now we're going to uh, we're going to uh, go through each candidate again, and we'll get one additional minute, Mr. Keene. But you don't have to take if you don't. I think I've said everything I had to say about that. I think uh, 
like I say, the, the place where Hilda has done a good job, I'm going to support. I will tell you that uh, I'm very concerned about illegal immigration. I'm concerned about its overall effects in our, in our county. And uh, I intend to attack the problem primarily first by enforcing our zoning laws. That means one family and one single family homes and no more as it's defined in our code currently. It means not allowing businesses to be on our streets. I went back and I, and I have here with me tonight a copy of the code on, biz, on, on businesses and business trucks may not park on residential streets. Tell me if you live in an old community in Woodbridge and you could say that that's happening. It's simply not. They're all over the place. The house next door to me has 12 young men there and nine vehicles parked in the street, many of which, several of which are, are uh, company vehicles. Thank you. Mr. President, one minute. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the issue of undocumented residents. What my opponent, uh, Chris, continues to call illegal immigrants. Um, you know, um, I, I certainly take offense to the way that this public policy issue has been framed by the Republican majority on the board. I feel very strongly that diversity and multiculturalism is really the bedrock of this uh, country. Uh, and when we send a clear message uh, to the, not just to Prince William County, but nationally via CNN, I think we are sending absolutely wrong signal uh, that we are closed to immigration, we're closed to diversity, we're closed to multiculturalism. And if there's one thing I would do differently than Chris, if I can turn the question around, um, I think, um, true, I'm against anyone that uh, violates the sovereignty of our laws, but I have to question whether or not... I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mr. Royce, you want to answer that question? <laughs> Was it voted? Yeah. yeah, one minute. The other thing I'll do differently is I will support funding uh, the continued crackdown on illegal immigration. And I actually don't like that term, illegal immigrant. The actual term is illegal alien. The, the department, I mean, the, the INS term is illegal alien. And that's the problem we're dealing with now. And I can tell you that I'm going to support, uh, unlike we saw on Tuesday, you know, Tuesday it was yippee for taxes over there at the supervisor meeting. Uh, you know, <laughs> Supervisor Jenkins and Supervisor Barr you immediately jumped in and thought, oh, we can get a 20% increase in taxes. Well, I'm going to support funding this by finding the funding within our own budget and by prioritizing our budget. Uh, General Order, have you guys read General Order 4501? Okay, General Order 4501 is the new police implementation, and it's a good, it's a good uh, 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 general order. It draws a bright line of probable cause, it protects victims, and it will uh, continue the crackdown on illegal immigration in Prince William County. That's what I'm going to do different. I'm going to support the funding of that. Thank you. This next question actually pertains to illegal immigration. I, there will be some, <laughs> some redundancy in this, but since each of you only had roughly uh, a minute or so to speak on it, this question is more specific, we'll go ahead with it. Uh, and you each have two minutes to respond to this, starting with Mr. Keene. Question is, Police Chief, De Police, Chief, Police Chief Dean of the Prince William Police Department has advised the Board of Supervisors that the yearly cost to police illegal aliens, according to their proposed resolution, will cost our taxpayers $2.5 million per year. Chairman Stewart called this amount inconsequential in an annual county budget of about $850 million, while others voiced concern about the cost. Would you have voted for this resolution if you had been a supervisor at the time? Where do you feel the money for this program should come from? Do you feel that the federal government should help bear the cost of this program? And what services would you cut to pay for this new program? Mr. Keaton. Two minutes. <laughs> I may ask you a question for this. Sure. a lot of very strong reasons why people are upset about the illegal immigration in our, in our, in our community. It is destroying the character of our neighborhoods. As we've said, anyone who's gone by the 7-Eleven down by Longview knows what we're talking about. The place is covered with people all day. There are no restroom facilities. The back woods behind there are, are a health hazard because of this. Um, the question is, would I have voted for the resolution if I had been on the board? The resolution as it was passed 
was simply to ask the police and the, and the county to come back and, and, and give us a, uh, give a cost estimate. Yes, I would have voted for that. Um, the second question is is about uh, that uh, what, what, where do you feel the money for this program should come from? The uh, well, I'll tell you that that it's easy for people to say, well, I'm going to reprioritize. I'm going to I'm going to go out and look at this. I've heard that every year. The fact of the matter is, there's good there's good reasons for the money that's in the budget now. If I have to raise taxes, if I have to vote to raise taxes. To, to crack down on illegal immigration, I am going to do it. This is, I'm hearing at every door I go to that this is the most important thing. In, in the older neighborhoods like I live in, it is destroying our neighborhoods. The next one is, uh, uh, how do you, do you feel that the federal government should help bear the cost of this program? If the federal government would just defend our borders, I'd be satisfied with that to stop any more. When I was young, I had a paper and, and you'd have a stack of newspapers there and a, new, and a wind would come along and start knocking them off. Well, you know, before you go chasing the newspapers, you put something on top of the stack to keep more from going off. Otherwise, they keep flying off. That's what the federal government needs to do. And I'll, I'll remind the candidates you're going to get another minute anyway on this. So, Mr. Principal. Uh, would I have voted uh, for the resolution? Absolutely. Uh, it was nothing more than a staff direct directive to uh, county staff to study what services could be denied, how to do it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It didn't have the force of law, and, and clearly we need to study the impacts. Um, with regard to the $2.5 million um, uh, cost estimate uh, to implement, uh, quite frankly, uh, anybody in government, as I have been uh, on Capitol Hill working for governors and uh, working at the local, local level, uh, clearly knows that $2.5 million is just the start of the cost of this resolution. Current estimates are somewhere between three and six million dollars per year over the next five years. That's a thirty million dollar investment to deport what uh, Department of Homeland Security told us forty uh, deportees per month. Now let's weigh that: thirty million dollars to deport forty a month versus thirty million dollars to be invested in world-class education. I, I, it would be very difficult for me to vote one way or the other at this point in time. Am I out of time? Was that, was that an out of time sign? I got time. Should the feds pay for this? Absolutely. The White House has failed us. They have not provided the leadership at the national level to protect our borders or reform the immigration system. My wife is Hispanic. She came over legally. We know firsthand that the system is broken. It is hor in horrible need of reform. And if the White House would just simply step into that vacuum and do something about it, I don't think we would be debating this issue here tonight. Mr. Royce, two minutes. Um, would you vote for the resolution? Yes. Where do you feel the money for this program should come from? Enforcement equals a reduction on the strain of our other services. Within five years, this will pay for itself. Uh, do you feel the federal government should help bear the cost? They already do. ICE already helps pay for this. Can they do more? Absolutely. The only way we can do that is to work more closely with our state and federal elected officials. What services would you cut for the pay for this new program? I would plan on cutting none. What I would like to do is prioritize our budget and one way, a technique I would like to continue to do that, prioritizing our budget, is to continue to support the uh, initiative that's in place now to bring in an independent auditor to look at that budget every year on a regular basis. Um, I can tell you now a couple things. You know, once you start digging on, once you dig yourself in a hole, the old saying goes, stop digging. Fill, fill it back in, and that's what we're doing now. By cracking down on immigration, we have a price point that we can meet in order to do that. I want, to, I, want to, I want you guys to repeat after me, if you will, those that want to participate. 40 is false. 40 is false. The director of detentions for ICE came to the supervisor's meeting on Tuesday and said that that was a fault, that was a planning number. I, no matter how many we have, ICE has to come get them. I work for the Department of Justice, I know this. That was a budget planning initiative for this new initiative that was being brought forward by the leading county in the United States on cracking down on illegal immigration. Thank you. Each candidate will get an additional minute if they would like, Mr. King. Thank you. Uh, to me, the critical way that we can cut down on the negative effects at our local level 
on, on it, the, the damages that illegal aliens are bringing to our, to our shores is by getting this definition. Let me read it to you. A single family, family dwelling should mean a residential dwelling containing only one dwelling unit. A family shall mean a group of people living together as a single housekeeping unit and consisting of one, one person. Number two, two or more persons related by blood, adoption, or marriage together with any number of offspring, foster, step, or adopted children. Number three, a group of three unrelated persons living and cooking together as a single housekeeping unit, though not related by blood, marriage, adoption, or guardianship. Or four, those groups identified in the Code of Virginia are like groups licensed by the Department of Social Services, which otherwise meet the criteria, which it means like a group home. If there is a house in our neighborhood that has something other than a single family, they are an unlicensed group home and need to be shut down. Thank you. Mr. Prince, you have an additional minute if you would like. <coughs> What more can I say about undocumented residents? They're against the law. They are uh, problems in our neighborhoods. We need to take back our neighborhoods. Uh, we need to enforce our zoning laws. We need to put in place fines and penalties on state, on employers who knowingly hire illegal aliens. Um, and I think we need to do the same with landlords. Clearly, if they're here illegally, they should go home. But, you know, it's how you do it uh, is, is, I guess, the important thing. Uh, and clearly sending a message uh, to the uh, immigrate, immigrants themselves in general uh, clearly was not the way to do it. And that is, quite frankly, one of the reasons why I'm standing before you today uh, to run for supervisor. I feel very strongly that the current Republican-controlled board of supervisors is not governing in our best interests. Uh, and that we need to uh, change in November. Mr. Rice, you have one additional. Uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy to hear my opponents tonight talking so much about uh, illegal immigration uh, and uh, illegal aliens because until tonight they've been absolutely silent on the issue. For the Potomac News on September 8th, I am the only supervisor uh, candidate that has uh, publicly supported the crackdown on illegal immigration. Now, I can tell you I've also been a supporter. I was there on Tuesday to support and commend the Board of County Supervisors and the Chief of Police on General Order 4501 that has come out. Like I said, this is a good general order. It is pro-immigration. It is also pro-law enforcement. It, like I said before, it gives a bright line of probable cause. It continues to support General Order 2.01, which says no racial profiling and it continues to protect victims. That is the tolerant approach we're all looking for. Chief Dean's done a great job on that. It does not send the wrong message. The message it sends is uh, from the song, uh, it's, clo uh, it's Closing Time. Uh, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Uh, the next question for each candidate is, uh, Describe why you believe the town of Occoquan is the best governed jurisdiction in the country. <laughs> Some wise guy submitted that question. Had the goal to use my handwriting. Even though the uh, I, I did get a request from uh, from some audience members at the break that we do try to keep the sidebars to a minimum while the candidates are answering questions because it is uh, can be a distraction. Next question. Uh, is what are your thoughts regarding the current county and citizen activity on parks, trails, and open space, and the comprehensive plans, plan amendments? And if you wouldn't mind commenting on your position on the Silver Lake proposals, uh, if you can squeeze it in. And that's two minutes to each of you, Mr. King. Thank you. Just turn this off. Thank you very much. Um, the uh, I am a big supporter of parks. I think that uh, it does several things for our community. Number one, it gives more recreational opportunities for our, our children and, and for ourselves, those of us who are so inclined to hike and to do those sorts of things. But also, it keeps more green space. It's very important for us to preserve whatever we have left. Those of you who live in Woodbridge know that most of it's been paved over by now, and so it's very important to preserve every acre we can of green space. Um, so parks and trails are very important. I think I got second part of yes, the question. Yes, if you could comment on uh, your preference on the Silver Lake proposals. Um, I, have no, I have no preferences on the Silver Lake proposals. Uh, they are on the other side of the county, 
and um, quite frankly, I, I've gotten an awful lot of uh, literature from them asking me if I'm going to preserve their way of life, and I'm telling them I'm up to my neck trying to pursue, trying to get back a way of life in Woodbridge. Mr. Principal, you have two minutes. I'd like to speak about parks, trails, and open space, green space, in the context of development. And we clearly have seen overdevelopment in Woodbridge, uh, and I think that if we can apply smart growth principles to, for example, the Route 1 corridor, I think that we can adequately provide uh, parks, trails, and open space uh, within the context of Woodbridge itself. Uh, with regard to uh, how we get there. That's important, again, how we get there, that we're not just simply passing moratorium to stop development. I mean, that's a simple solution. It's really, that's a simple way out of actually finding a, a true public policy solution. Uh, one of the things that I advocate in Woodbridge is the reformation of something we call WELT a long time ago. This is an acronym that stands for the Woodbridge Environment and Land Use Transportation Committee. It's akin to LOCA uh, in Lake Ridge. It is an opportunity for citizens to be able to provide input early in the process uh, so that we have citizen input that reflects development, that reflects the needs that we have with regard to parks, trails, and, and open space. With regard to Silver Lake, um, I, you know, I uh, feel very strongly that uh, the proffer that has been provided by the uh, developer there uh, should be maintained, uh, owned by Prince William County as part of our parks and trail system. Mr. Royce, two minutes. <coughs> we live in Ripon Landing. I don't know if you guys know where that is, the old part. But, uh, you know, there's, there's a sign as you come in. It says a Virginia Green community. That's the only one left on Route 1. I mean, that, that's it. Uh, overdevelopment has, uh, has removed a lot of opportunity and a lot of previously existing uh, parks, trails, and open space. As the first to announce uh, his candidacy and run for this seat, you know, you guys know, like I've said, I've been a strong advocate for revitalizing the Route 1 corridor along the lines of smart growth. I'm glad you picked that term up for me, Frank. And, um, uh, you know, I've also continued to support an effective uh, and meaningful open space plan uh, that promotes recreation for our residents. Um, I can tell you, you know, I'm on the Conservation Alliance, I remember the Conservation Alliance, and I've been working hard on the Parks, Trails, and Open Space Plan, uh, and, you know, some of the things that people have come to me and asked for once I'm supervisor, and that I, that I support trying to find a way to do. Uh, one thing in particular is a, is a dog park. You know, because of the overdevelopment on Route 1, uh, and uh, the, the lack of supporting it,